on a Tuesday night. Music. No more loneliness. Now you have prestige your ultimate companion. Experience his musical charm with charismatical passion. So innovative and more interactive. From 10 p.m. to 1 a.m. On Styles FM. Music with prestige. Don't miss it. W-A-W, the caravan of love. What a Wednesday. This and every Wednesday from 9 a.m. until 1 on the p.m. Chongi takes you on a caravan of love of love songs. Four hours of love songs on Styles FM. The People Station, 96.1, 96.7. www.stylzfm.com. Don't miss it. What a Wednesday. The caravan of love. Good morning to you, good morning, and we are inside of Positive, yeah. So this morning, you know, you know, when, when, when it comes to Positive, we, we, we have the real deal going on where the thing is all about good medicine, yeah, substantial, you know, good food, good brain food, good thing. It's all good, Positive, yeah, you get something good out of it, don't. Because uh, yesterday we had the people from the Transport Authority, and trust me, the whole thing, it came upon us that, you know what, we need to do a part two. So I just hope that when we finish talking to JPS this morning, the, the, the manager said, Captain Baker, you know what, we need to have a part two. So the, this morning, is it Mrs. or Miss Detomi Sergeant? Miss. Miss. So you're not married yet. Okay. Cool. No. <laughs> All right. Good morning to you. The parish manager from JPS inside of Portland. Good morning. How are you? Good morning. I'm doing very well, thank you. And thank you for having us, well, having me here today. <laughs> All right. All right. All right. Uh, today we're looking at so much that it centers with JPS. Uh, tell us a little bit about JPS on a whole in the sense of what is it that you people are looking for from your customers? Okay, well, JPS is, is uh, what we call a regulated utility. Um, mm -hmm. And we are involved in the generation, transmission, and distribution of electricity. So there are actually two sides to our business. There's generation, which is producing the electricity. And then there is transmission and distribution, which is how, where we sell the electricity. And essentially, you know, a lot of people say we have a monopoly. The monopoly is really only on transmission and distribution. So we're the only ones licensed to sell electricity. But in terms of generation, that's a competitive market. So, but when it comes to our customers, so we're really talking about the transmission and distribution side now. One of the, the big issues that customers will always speak about is the cost. And there are many, many elements to that, but uh, one of the issues that we face as a company in which our customers can really assist us is the issue of losses. And when we say losses, it, it's sort of general, but in particularly theft. We, I, 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 I didn't want to get there so early. You didn't want to go there so early, I, I but did, that's I didn't right, want to get there so early, but we want, let, let us get there and uh, Yeah, and, and let's get there. the ugly out but of the way first. But let me ask you, let me ask you. The, 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 this all thing about the, the, the electricity theft thing, what is so hard for you people about it? Well, there are a number of things. Uh, one of the things is that uh, we are exposed in that our, our network is above ground. And well, not just a matter of it's above ground, it's out there, it's everywhere. Even if it was underground, it would be everywhere. So basically, you don't exactly have a security guard over every inch of the line mm -hmm. 24 hours a day. It's not possible, really. So we are constantly exposed, our product is constantly exposed, and that makes it easier for persons to steal it. Also, another problem we face is that there are a lot of people who don't think anything is wrong with stealing it. They don't think it's something wrong, where it's really a crime. And the truth is also there's the economics of it in terms of the fact of the matter is right now our product is, carries a high price due to the, the oil prices, etc. And so that also, you know, encourages theft. And then the thing is, our people are very creative. That's another challenge because so I, I, I get the feeling that you're saying creative 
is that they find different ways of, oh, of yeah. dealing with and it. And we have invested so much as a company in trying to stop it. Technology, technology that has worked in so many other parts of the world, we bring it here. In, within a matter of months, we're back to square one. We've tried so many different means, and they just keep getting creative, more and more creative on us. All right, what, what, what is it about a flat rate introduction to, to minimize such a thing? Well, you would have heard, uh, you know, it said that we as GPS, we are not in support of a flat rate. Mm -hmm. Why? Because a flat rate doesn't encourage management. If I give you a flat rate, it means you just use whatever you want and mm -hmm. you pay one cost. Okay. And that doesn't work for those who have to pay for exactly what they use. So we're saying if it is that you're in such a position that you cannot afford it, mm -hmm. you're really in dire straits, such as persons who you'd have per, you, persons who are say on the path program or whatever. We're saying here's how we think you, we should approach that. You, we do a test as similar as you do for the path program to show that you're really in need. Of it. And then we give you a limit and say as long as you stay below this limit of consumption, you will pay this subsidized rate. But isn't there, isn't there a mechanism put in place where you cannot use a certain, you cannot go above a certain amount of electricity? Like the, like the volume of electricity that, that you use and all. Because, no. I, 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 all right, let me look at um, the, some of these meters that you put in, in inside of some of the inner city areas. Mm -hmm. Isn't that um, they, they, when they exceed a certain amount, it, 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 do you have a situation like that? Uh, no, once you're a metered customer, you know, you, you're really allowed to use what you desire to use and you pay for it. But remember now we're talking in the cases of persons who don't want to pay for it at okay. all. So we're saying if the reason you steal is because you say you can't afford it, if we should say give you a subsidized rate mm -hmm. for you to come onto the, the system, then we're expecting that your usage will be controlled because you can't afford it. Yeah. So we're not expecting you to be splurging, which is what happens now when they don't pay. They just use, uh, people will tell you that when they have neighbors who steal electricity, they leave their radio on all day, mm -hmm. blaring and gone about their business, TV, lock up TV, on, everything, on. AC, everything, body, all lock right. up and, and John gone. Brown, John Brown is living at Block A. But in Block A, there's um, a, a, a sense of six, six different apartment on block a that and this comprises of one person ha having the light legit but at the same time john brown distributes to this person within is it as in he's subletting what we right. call subletting mm -hmm. now that is a breach of the contract that we have with john brown okay we are the only ones who are licensed to be distributing electricity like that so because even if you decide to generate for yourself, which you are free to do, mm -hmm. um, you cannot sell it to anybody else. In order to distribute it to somebody else, mm -hmm. you have to sell it to us. Mm -hmm. And then we do the distribution. So that is what makes that wrong. And okay. so it's also a breach of the terms and conditions of the contract that we so have with our customers. It's the whole tapping into your thing, make it illegal. And not just that, it's not usually safe. Okay. One is a safety issue, and two, I can't tell you how many customers I've had. I've had customers wanting me to intervene in the dispute they're now having with their neighbor because, because they got the into neighbor, that interarrangement. The give me light and and then when the bill come, mm -hmm. who is responsible for what? Because okay. and you've had cases where persons who sublet end up have to pay the whole bill for everybody because that's the only way they can get the light, and they're the one who needs it the most because the one who has the account stop paying. Because he doesn't have to anymore. He yeah. has six persons on it. Mm -hmm. Let them pay it. Okay. All right. Let's look at um, let's let us let us let us look at the the, the the whole thing about um, lights, street light. Street lights. Um, when it comes to street lights, you know, we take it in two elements. There are one. There are pr pr places where that don't have street lights, and cu customers will say to us, you know, you need to put a street light here. Uh, Installing new street lights is something that comes through the parish council. Okay. So we usually ask persons in communities where they need a new street light, mm -hmm. as in there has been no street lights there before, to make a request to the parish council. The parish council will then give us the instructions as mm -hmm. to whether to install or not. So for new street lights, it's through the parish council. In terms of repairs of street light, um, 
that can come directly to us or to the parish council and they pass it on to us um this year um to be honest we got off to a late start with our repairs but we have been doing repairs since april um as you can imagine it's a wide area to cover mm -hmm. and the resources are in some areas limited but we are we have been repairing and we are still doing repairs so i i, I would say to especially our residents of portland it's not that we're not doing street lights we may not have reached yet one of the things is we try to organize ourselves so that um we're operating efficiently it doesn't make sense for me to send to one community today fix two and then come back go to another community so we try to clear up areas at a time so we are working on it we're coming you know, I, 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 just, I, I just wanted to stick up in and go back to this electricity thing. Where is it in Portland? Because I, I know that you, you cover Jamaica, but let's look at Portland for now. Where are you having this the most in Portland? In Portland, um, on the west side, I would say um, our troublesome areas are... Um, we have quite a few out, uh, we find out, in Dover. Mm -hmm. And while uh, most of Dover is in St. Mary, they are fed by Portland. Okay. So they still fall under our umbrella. Mm -hmm. Fruitful Vale is another area um, where we tend to find uh, quite a few on the west side. On the east side, uh, further out, uh, Manchineal area, that section there, barracks, those areas there, you have some little spots. And when and and, and, and in when, the valley, when you find these persons, what 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 type of um, family group do they drop on? In, in like, let's say, is it a poor family that you know they can find it to pay the bill, but they are still doing it? It varies, and to be honest, um, let me point out that in Portland, honestly, we have one of the lowest levels of mm -hmm. theft, but we still have quite a bit. But I like that. I like that. <laughs> yes. The lowest level. I, lo I love that. In I terms that. of when you compare to the other parishes. And um, I must be honest, though, that we do find that there are some cases where it happens not because the persons want to, or whatever but there are some persons who because of where they live they're not in close proximity to the distribution network so in order to build a network to them it's a high cost and so what they basically opted to do is to do their own thing and get to us all right let me ask you i live somewhere i've never had this thing before how do i get it and what's the cost well if you live in an area where there's no electricity there are a number of options. Uh, it's all, first of all, it depends on the distance you are from the existing network. We will come obligatory up to 300 feet from, from the, where we are now. So if you're about 300 feet from where the network is, we will build a line up to that point. Uh, however, if you're beyond that point, what you're now talking is a construction job wherein we, our engineers come out, they do a drawing of what it's going to take to get the power to you, and then we give you a costing. The costing varies as well as the payment options. It depends on the situation. So there, depending on your situation, it may be an option where you have to pay for all of it. It may be an option where you get, a, you get the option to pay 50% and we stand the other 50. It depends on the situation. So it's not easy to say this is what it is going to be. It depends on your particular situation and where you are located. But we go obligatory 300 feet from where we presently are. All right. People blaze a lot on the, 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 the high payment of bill. How would you say to somebody, this is what you need to do to minimize that? Okay, well, and then we come around from the ugly to the more positive part, yeah. really. Um, it's management, energy conservation, energy management is what we, we constantly say to our customers. You need to manage what you're using. It is not cheap right now. I'm not going to try to pretend like it is, but there are some things that are out of con our control and what is in your control is managing what you use for our part um, on the 1st of July we will be opening our branch of the East store and that's uh, JPS's store where we sell energy saving energy management devices that you can use we have had customers who tell you you know their, their light bills have gone down by up to 50% just using these things we're talking LED bulbs timers etc so that's something our customers in Portland can look forward to taking advantage of um, 
um, the gadgets in the e-store. And what these will help you to do is overall conserve, which is what it comes down to, not wasting electricity, using just what you need to pay for. You know, so it's being careful how you use the refrigerator, the iron, every I was, I was appliance just about to that ask you, you have. Is, 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 what, is so, what is the most dangerous thing in my house that use so much of the uh, of of the electricity that you you supply number one on your list on the average household list would be your refrigerator that's the average household we're not talking where you have the ac and the business so now. would you recommend that i go in the fridge at least once per day i wouldn't say at least once that's almost impossible but no, no, it's, it's it, about managing there are a number of things when it comes to the refrigerator mm -hmm. one don't have your refrigerator in an area where there's heat Okay. Keep it away from sunlight, mm -hmm. not beside your stove where there is heat. The refrigerator is to cool stuff. If it is in a hot area, it's going to work harder. Okay. Don't pack up the refrigerator with everything at the end of the month when you do the shopping. Air must be able to pass through the goods, the, the stuff that's in the refrigerator. So you're, saying you're putting more pressure on the fridge? Yes. And as you said, don't be opening it every minute of the day. Especially during summer is coming up with the children, we recommend you I, get an I igloo. I was going to get there because we have the kids. The parents don't, don't, don't mind it. But every time the child needs to take a, 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 a glass of ice water, perhaps you might have a, 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 a drink in the fridge. You go in mm. there every time to throw juice. We recommend to parents when it comes to summer holidays, mm -hmm. get an igloo, you put that on the counter, that's where they get their water and juice from. Mm -hmm. Not in the fridge, in and out of the fridge every minute. Some of them go there to cool down like it's AC. No. <laughs> <laughs> and adults do it too. So it's, it's about controlling the environment. And we always recommend, you know, the children are the easiest ones to get on board. We recommend that make it a project for them. They're the energy monitors of the house. They will walk, they will turn off the lights when you are in the room mm -hmm. if you get them on board. So get the children on board, help them to understand. You know, some parents go as far as to say, okay, if the light bill goes down this month, you get an extra hundred dollars. And you'd be surprised how well the children take this on. You but people you people have this level of encouraging people to do some stuff to get a little bonus on your your bill and all of that, like I'm um, paying your bill on time. Yes. And, and all of that. But let me go to this question from, from uh, it's, it's coming from a listener. Ask her about a pre-ment meter where you use a card to top up. So no, I think you should oh, understand. It's the prepaid metering. Yeah. And I wanted to mention that. So thank you, listener, for that yeah. question. It's one of the things we are trying out in we're trying it out in Portmore right now. It's prepaid <laughs> metering, <laughs> yes. So basically you get out you go you, you come into Orbil Express you at the office, up. you buy a voucher that is assigned to your meter only. Mm -hmm. So nobody else can use it even if you lose it. Mm -hmm. But you know, you keep your number handy, you go home, you enter that in you have a unit in your house, you enter that number into your unit and it tops up how much ever you want to put on it. And basically when you get to a point where you only have five kilowatt hours left, it gives you a warning that that's it's time it, to top up. That's a great spirit behavior, right? Yeah, it, it tells you it's time to top top up again or if it is that you have reached five kilowatt hours, you know you don't have no money to go buy, to go top up again, but you know something special happening this evening. Mm -hmm. You control what you use until then to save your five kilowatt hours for your event. So let me ask you then, you're using it in Portmore. So basically it's in Jamaica, right? Yes, we have two persons. Last week we installed our first two meters. Here one come to me now. <laughs> <laughs> well, we haven't come to Port, started trying it out in Portland, but right now it's persons who are volunteering in Portmore to try it out because we want to ensure that when we roll it out to the mm -hmm. public, all the kinks and everything I, I'm ready is to right. volunteer. I'm ready, <laughs> okay. I'm ready. We will wear that in mind when it comes to Portland. But it, re it, it really, I actually spoke to one of the persons on Friday and he said when it was installed on Monday, he, he put on a $500 voucher. And Friday when I spoke to him, he's like, he's still going, hasn't reached his five kilowatt Is hours yet. Is it economical? Yet. You think it's economical? Yes. And he said in terms of what his monthly bill used to be, it was pretty much in the same range. Mm -hmm. But the good thing is that you have control. Okay. It's what it comes down to. It gives our customers control over their spend. If, you, if it is that you cannot, just like with phones, if you are not one of those persons who can go postpaid and just whenever, when your bill comes, whatever mm -hmm. it is, you pay it. With a prepaid, you are able to spend as on electricity as you have it. So and you're, you're able control. to manage. As I said, if you reach a point, if you put on $500 and you know that it needs to stretch for two weeks, you're going to control what you're using 
to ensure that it's stretched for the two weeks rather than just using and not having a clue what your bill is going to be like. So it's about putting control in the hands of our customers and that's one of the things we've been really trying to do for the past two years work on ways to put control in the hands of our customers. Okay, some people said JPS is taking the money away from the people. But let me ask you another thing. What is it that you are giving back? Because I know you have some, you might be going into schools, you might have programs that you're offering. What, what, what is it that you're giving back? Well, we, we JPS, and, and you know, it's one of those things where you're like, when you think about it, we give a lot back to our communities, mm -hmm. uh, especially we like to focus on children, the youth and education. Um, a lot of schools in Port Anier, a lot of basic schools for years now have benefited from our nutritional program wherein the money that these schools get from the government for food for the children mm -hmm. is really, really low. Mm -hmm. And f over the years, we have been matching that with millions of dollars across the island. Over 30,000 children benefit from this each year and quite a few here in Portland. And so we've been working with them in that regard. You know, just this year for our Labor Day project here in Portland, we built a gazebo for the young men out at Myrton Boys Home from scratch, just our team members um, and putting our share that we got for community project in it. We have a foundation right now. We launched our foundation last year. So more, our giving is more organized right now. And I, so I think more people will start to see it rather than before when it was really, it wasn't as organized as with the foundation. But needless to say, we, millions of dollars each year, we give back to the communities, we give back to schools, especially to students. Um, we have a focus on leadership right now. So we have a number of young people in leadership training through the foundation. Um, that we've been working with and we have three model schools across the island because and these are basic schools that we have been we're ensuring that they become basically model schools in that they have all the requirements of an early childhood learning institution a proper playground proper lighting their teachers are properly trained everything so there's one in region east which is our region one in central and one in west so those are the three that we've started with but this is one of our main aims right now, to get these model schools to the place where they are basically, call it perfect early childhood institution in terms of how, of how they offer education to our, our children. What's your toll free number, should in case uh, somebody wanna call you, and um, your office number? Okay, well here, uh, the general toll free number for our customer care center, we have two, there's one eight 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 two two five. 5577 seven, seven. that's a lime line mm -hmm. and then we have 1888 935 5577 that's digicel and that we had put in a digicel line so it would be cheaper for our digicel customers because we had you know customers repeat, complaining repeat about the, the credit. numbers for me again please so it's 1888 225 5577 lime and digicel is 1888 935 Five five seven seven. Our Port Antonio office. The number is nine nine three two six one eight. Sorry, one nine two six one nine. And basically, you select the option for who you want to speak to. I must say to some of our customers in Portland who may have been trying to call over the past few um, a week or so, um, they may not have been getting through. We realized it was reported to us, but Lime is actually at our office today trying to sort that out. So after today. Hopefully that problem should be resolved before line. All right, I got a text. Uh, I got a text. This person says, sometimes you do so much things to keep the bill down, but yet still it's the same thing. It's a, and it's something that customers talk about a lot, but the truth is it's what happens when you have a moving part to your bill. The second part of your bill, if, if, you, if you look at your bill, you'll notice that there are two sections to it. There's the first part, which is what we call the energy, the non-fuel charges, mm -hmm. which is essentially what JPS keeps. That's our money. And that's usually about 30% of your bill. The second part, which is the fuel, where the fuel charges are, that's about 70% of your bill, approximately, and it changes every month. So some months it goes up, some months it goes down. But, and so that is what makes it a little difficult for customers to keep track. And sometimes customers say, then it doesn't make sense to conserve. But I always say, if you usually use 100 kilowatt hours, and uh, the fuel cost this month is, is uh, um, $26, 
Next month, you conserve and you got it down to 90, mm -hmm. 90 kilowatt hours. While you may not see any significant move in their dollar figure, the fact is if you had used your usual 100 kilowatt hours, it would have been higher. Mm -hmm. So you've still managed to save something. It's just that, yeah, it wasn't the decrease you were hoping for, but right. you have one, saved. One, one more question before we, 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 we close this part of the show. Is, it, is there a case where if I found out that my bill is, let's put a, 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 a price of $20,000, but it's a thing that you people found out that my bill was not correct. Would, 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 would the correct figure that you found out that it was um, $10,000, would the rest go over to the other month? Well, there are two things that may happen in that case. One, depending on when we discover it, mm -hmm. um, you may be rebuilt. Okay. As in, we do over the bill and, and send you another bill. Mm -hmm. Other than that, yes, it should be reflected. And this happens um, sometimes when we have to estimate customers. Um, you, may, you may be under or overestimated. But what happens is on your next bill, when we get the actual reading, it corrects itself basically. So this is how sometimes a customer will end up with a negative bill, yeah. so, which happens in, in, in a lot of the cases. In, in usually when, you are o when it was an overestimation, the next month when we get the correct reading, you usually end up seeing the, that credit on your bill. Anything you want to add finally that we left out? Um, well, <laughs> that means that you want me to go on for another hour. Yeah, I, no, I, I, I just, I just no, want just in anything that is really important that we should let the listeners know before you leave here. Well, the key thing I want go. customers to know about is that, as I, I did mention it before, is that we're opening our e-store and it is, we really want our customers to try to take advantage of the products that we will be selling there. It will help, go far away in helping to manage your energy costs, reduce your bills, and at the end of the day, what we want customers to remember is that conserve. At this time, with oil prices where they are, until we get new generation, which brings the price down, your key is to conserve. We're doing what we can from our end, and Team Portland is committed to offering the best service we can. But at the same time, we ask customers to please conserve. I notice the light is not going off that much again. Yes, our you operations team hard. has been working, 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 and especially now with the World Cup, they're like, don't worry, it's not going off. Look so here, if you, you see, I go, I go and come for you, I go and come for you with a strap if you make the final deal. <laughs> <laughs> no. well, we're working on that. No, really. please, <laughs> please. Trying to keep it in Anyway, um, on the fun side of it, you, you, your people enter business homes? Uh, we did last year. We did it this year. Last year we came third, actually. So you, it, you, you don't want to go back. Out, fresh Why you don't out. Go back this we year? we it, it, this year got off to a rocky start for us. You know all the planning and organizing. Okay. Because uh, we we literally are going through a transformation process mm -hmm. as a company, um, and so it's been getting all, the year got off to a really um, rocky start in terms of getting everything in place and um, looking at our goals, setting our targets of what we need to accomplish this year. Okay. So, um, and then there were some vacations and stuff. So the guys who would usually participate mm -hmm. weren't all able to train and stuff. So by the time it came upon us, we were not ready. Um, but we did come third last year, um, fresh out of, of, of fresh and, off and, the block. And, and she don't, and she and don't want to come first this year, so. No, we will, we will, we will, I'm sure we'll be back at some point right. to um, take our rightful place. I just want to say a special thanks for you coming through. And this question is not to JPS, oh. but it, this question is to you, personally <laughs> to you. The name of the, this feature is known as positive. What makes you positive? Wow, I would say it is uh, my faith in God, which gives me constant hope. Okay. I don't lose hope easily because I always believe that there's something greater to come. On behalf of JPS, quick. On behalf of JPS, um, you know, power on. <laughs> okay, we just want to say a special thanks to Miss Demet. Uh, uh, they told me sergeant. I, I get that right? Yes, they told me sergeant, like the right. police. Right, sergeant. They told me sergeant. Thank you for coming through, and we hope that we'll have you here further down the road. And, you know, we just want to say thank you very much, and we're on. We take a break. We'll go.
Portlanders Portlanders, Acan Auto Technology, located at 33 Bomber Crescent, Port Antonio. Visit us 